This past fall at the museum's annual Oyster Fest celebration on November 5, 2011, 57 members of the Parks family, spanning four generations, came to campus for a family reunion and to celebrate the rebirth of Rosie in memory of her builder, Bronza Parks, and his brother and Rosie's captain, Orville Parks. Chief Curator Pete Lesher addresses the Parks family members as well as donors to the restoration project. Press Harding, grandson of Bronza, and Tom Parks, grandson of Orville, presented the museum with a selection of Bronza's and Orville's tools, now part of our permanent collection. In the last installment of the Rosie Parks update, shipwright apprentices Bud and India had just finished replacing the short side deck beams, installing a new mass partner and new deck beams. Meanwhile, master shipwright Mark had just exposed the original chine log. Before the installation of the new chine log, the shipwrights had to first create a pattern. Shipwright apprentice India cuts out the new chine log from white oak. In the background, you can see where the new and the old chine log meet. The chine did not need to be steamed because even though it's white oak, the length was long enough that there was enough spring in it. The front of the chine is seated first into the stem and clamped into place, and then frame by frame, the chine is bent into place. The forward chine and the aft chine fit together and are fastened into a newly installed frame. Here, the chine log is completely installed both port and starboard. After the completion of the chine, the crew finish replacing the rest of the unusable frames, and their attention then focused to tearing off the original side planking. Shipwright apprentice India and volunteer Mike Corliss began the demolition of the side planks and the metal roller, which sits on the top of the side planks. The metal roller was where oyster dredges were attached before being thrown off the side of the boat. The crew then began to replace the aft stringers, which go between the keel and the chine. Here is an inside view, and here is a view from the outside. Temporary bottom planks were installed so the crew could pinpoint the location of the build stringers that run fore and aft and provide more stability to the boat for upcoming side planking. A pattern was created for the new side planks measuring from the chine log. In this image, you can see all the tabs that were created to get the width and the shape of the new chine plank. Each plank requires a unique pattern as no two are alike. Once the pattern is set, India begins to cut the yellow pine as Mark and Bronza watch. Once the new plank was cut, shipwrights India, Mark, and Mike clamped it to the chine and the frames. Again, this piece did not need to be steamed because its 23-foot length gave it flexibility. The new chine plank is fastened into place. Now the crew moves to the starboard side and repeats the process. Here, India fastens the new chine plank into place, starting at the stem and moving back. Both of the chine planks are installed. Each chine plank, in its entirety, from the stem to the transom, is comprised of three pieces. You can see where two sections of the chine plank are joined by a shiplap. Here's the pattern for the last third of the chine plank. The first two sections were about the same length, but the last third is about half the size. The other two planks had a fairly straight shape, but the last third has a lot more shape to it due to the fact that the boat sweeps upward at the transom. Here is where the third section will be installed, and here is the finished product. Next up is installing the top plank, but before the shipwrights can start, they needed to locate the shear line, which is the top side of the shear plank, resting at the very top. The shear line is what people see when they look at the boat. It gives it its definition and shape, so its precise location is critical to the aesthetics of the boat. Here is an image of Rosie in the process of being built. Bronza did not write any measurements down, building his boats completely in his head, and the shipwrights have to follow the same process, measuring one thing at a time. There are essentially no blueprints for Rosie. Plank by plank, she must be painstakingly measured and refared. All of the side planks are now up, and work on Rosie continues year-round. Be sure to stop by for our Community Workdays program and help restore this historic skipjack.